local coverage. This is News 10 at 6. If you live in Lansing, you know I-496. Now a busy freeway through the heart of the capital city, it was once home to hundreds of families. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Andrews. And I'm Ann Emmerich. Those families were mostly people of color forced to move when I-496 was constructed in the 60s. The city of Lansing hopes a federal grant could help bring displaced communities back together. News 10's Riley Connell is live in downtown Lansing with more. Yeah, hi, Ann and David. Well, on the tail end of rush hour traffic here in downtown Lansing, you can still hear the buzz of dozens of those vehicles as they make their commute on I-496. And actually, you can still see some of that traffic going by right now. When this freeway was constructed, it turned about 70 streets into a complete dead end. Uh, it definitely was a kind of shock because uh, we only had a limited amount of time to get out of there and didn't know where to go or what to do. 1115 West St. Joseph. That's where Adolph Burton's family home was located. But that Lansing address doesn't exist anymore. Burton and hundreds of his neighbors were forced to uproot to make room for I-496. We just want to make sure that it's not forgotten what, what did happen. It's history, it's part of our history. Keeping that history alive, Burton recently produced a documentary called They Even Took the Dirt, which tells the story of black families displaced by I-496. Decades after its construction, Lansing Mayor Andy Shore says he's applying for a multi-million dollar grant to try and repair the damage done. And there's more money available in a second round, and we're confident that, uh, that we have a, a great project. If they can get the money, Shore is hoping to build over the freeway with housing or a park in some way bringing back a sense of community. This is something that affected many of their families, and if not, this is something that many folks are, are upset about. That you want to talk about equity, this is the reverse. The idea was it would, initially when it was built, is it would bring people to the city. Well, what, what planners forgot is it also took people away from the city. Members of the Lansing Historical Society also supporting the city's project, and Burton, eager to see the outcome, but knowing the community that once was, can't be recreated. You can't, you can't get that back. You know, the, 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 the feelings, the warmth, the, the guidance, the way the neighborhood was, you might see that in a lot of old movies. Now, Mayor Shore even going as far as to write an opinion piece for the Detroit Free Press, raising awareness to this project. He says if the city is able to get that grant funding, they'll start the planning process as soon as they can. Live in Lansing, Riley Connell, News 10. Shifting now to our Thursday evening weather as we take a live look over downtown Lansing. First, elite meteorologist Andy Provenzano is in our weather center to tell us what we can expect tonight. Looks pretty nice out there, Andy. Yeah, it's still not bad and it's dry. It'll be dry all night. It's tomorrow that we get into the heavier rains. Not a good looking Friday or Saturday for that matter. We're starting to get the clouds to start to filter in. They'll